Hi folks. Well, winter's coming now, and as we know, the energy fuel crisis is meaning that gas and electricity are getting very, very dear. And I thought of a little way to overcome it by getting a diesel heater, one you'd normally install in a camper van, for example. Well, I've got one here, and I got this from Vivor, and uh, let's have a look at it. So up until now, folks, this is what I have been using in my log cabin, but this gives off a, a real flame, and sometimes there can be fuel vapors about in here, and it could be combustible in here at any stage of the game. So I thought about getting one of these. Now, I've seen these installed in uh, camper vans and the like, but I'm thinking I'm definitely going to install this in my workshop, so I'm going to rig it up temporarily. But first of all, let's open the box and see what we got here. We're going to go with this one. Let's see what we got inside the box. We have a base plate. We'll come back to that in a minute. We've got a little exhaust baffle there. We've also got a fuel tank. Now that fuel tank there is apparently a 10 litre one. And inside the tank comes a little adapter you can screw on for your fuel nozzle, which will be fitting on one of these little flats there. There's one on the side there as well, a little flat and that nozzle will fix in there once you've drilled a hole. I understand that the, apparently the later versions of these have this spout already fixed on there, so just depending on what model you've got will depend on where the, this actually fits on. And I also know that these spouts, I think they're better on the side. Some of them do come in the middle there as well, so again, do check before you buy in case you're trying to put this under a seat unit in a camper van and the spout in the middle can be sort of intrusive on get in the lowest height you can so that's that so this again is a box of parts for it and right so in here we get the actual wiring loom as well which comes complete you don't have to do any modification to that you do get a fuel line in here now this seems to be what i call the upgraded one this is a pretty tough one to press apparently the earlier ones had a very flimsy and flexible line that kink a lot easier so this is as it comes out of the box on the one i've got you get the little ports there for fixing two vents on and you also get the flexible pipe to go over the top there and obviously that could stick in there and this will go in and out as well and there's a little t-piece for it there we've also got an, an inlet air filter with an inlet air pipe that would obviously go on there like that and there should be a jubilee clip in this bag here all the nuts and bolts and clips should be in here already folks so you shouldn't have to imply anything so there's another oh we got two of them didn't realize we have actually got two of them pipes so one for either side or just join them together or whatever you've also got the fuel pump there that's the diesel fuel pump and you've also got the bendable pipe for the exhaust coming out of the unit so that's that and in here itself if i just take this out now and move this box away this is the actual diesel heater itself folks so if we just open this polystyrene here oh, i see it also comes with the main controller as well there folks and you also get a remote control for it as well so you can actually turn it on off and there's a plus and a minus there as well so not sure whether you can raise or lower the temperature off this as well so that's that it's quite a compact little unit all we've got on it is the wiring loom coming out which should just connect onto our wiring loom so that's where the air comes into the unit and that's where the hot air gets blown out there and underneath there so that's the inlet line the inlet line is next to the fuel line because obviously you don't want to a hot line next to a fuel exhaust so the inlet line is there and apparently you've got to have these uh, air filters on because if you don't have that fitted apparently it can be quite noisy as well so that's the inlet line that will obviously be the fuel line there which will go onto there and then the exhaust line which will be your metal one will be that one and that would go on there the furthest away from that fuel input there obviously right so that's it so i plan to fit this in my log cabin and i'm possibly thinking of somewhere around here maybe fit the unit this unit on the outside on the little shelf outside there uh, you also need a 12 volt supply to this folks that's why i've got a battery here which i've had on charge for the past day so you need that uh, a 12 volt supply to it and basically everything should be here 
for me to set this up. So what I'll do first, I think I'll rig it up in here first. We'll have a little test of it first before I look, finally get it in its original location where I'm going to want it. So let's start setting this thing up now and we'll take it from there. So initially, I'm just going to put this plate on first of all and just tie them nuts down there. Now this plate, as I say, could be fixed to a board or whatever. So the intake pipe goes on there. We'll just slide over the clip on there. There we go, that's the intake pipe on. And the air filter will be exactly the same on the other end. Just like that. There we go, that's the air intake on. And this is the exhaust baffle and obviously a bracket there to fit it with. So I'll just take this blue decorative paper, uh, protection paper off. And one other thing to note as well, folks, is that um, with this exhaust, a lot of people do put it on sideways like that and have it sticking out sideways. But if you can see there, there's a little hole there and it's designed to be vertical because any water that collects into there will run out of that hole there. So that's just a thing to note as well. And one other thing to note as well, I've had to take this exhaust pipe off again is that one side is slightly larger than the other. As you can see, that one goes in there and the other one didn't. So I had to unscrew that, just put that on there like that. And then tighten this one down. There we go. And this end can go on the pipe down the bottom there. There we go, that's that. Just spin it around for a second. So here we have our fuel line as well. So I'm just going to undo a bit of this. And this literally will push over there. So I've got these little spring clips here, which just uh, help to push it on. There we go. And just literally just push that spring clip on. And that sits on there like that. So here we have our diesel pump or our fuel pump. So we just take the ends off of that. And because I'm unsure at the moment of where I'm going to be fitting this, I'm just gonna sort of cut a little piece of this off first of all, the fuel line. And uh, apparently the fuel line has to be fitted at a slight angle like that. There is a little bracket, a rubberized bracket there because this makes a little bit of noise apparently, a little bit of a clicking noise. So you can actually fix this to a wall or whatever. But uh, as I say, it wants to be going uphill. So the fuel comes in from the bottom, from the fuel canister, and then from the top, it goes into your machine itself. I'm just gonna snip that off there for the moment, like that. So it will be coming into that will be facing upwards. Where that connector faces upwards, that goes to your actual unit itself. So I need another little clip just to put over that line there. The connector end goes to the unit. You can put this on hot water, folks, to uh, heat the pipe up if it's a little bit tight. We'll persevere with it. There we go. I've just got it on the edge there. Just put that clip on there like that for the moment. There we go. And this second one will go into the fuel tank. So we'll just get another one of these pipes, clips, and then just poke that onto, here we go, just push that on. And just put that clip on there for the moment. Right, so that's got to be mounted slightly uphill. Right, so I've got a temporary setup here, folks. I've just sat it there. The uh, fuel pipe, I've just sat there with the fuel pump sitting in an uphill slant with the connector facing upwards. Then that connects onto our unit itself. The two pipes there, that's the air intake one, as you can probably see there. I've just faced it out and I will turn it and open the door out when I fan, when I eventually switch the unit on. So the other end of the fuel pipe, I'm actually going to take into the bottom of the fuel tank there, because I'll be sitting that vertically like that outside when it eventually gets done properly. So that little flat there, I'm going to drill a seven mil hole in because that's the size of the threaded part of the adapter which comes with the unit. So 
I'm just going to drill that now. There we go, nice and easy that. So this comes with a couple of sealing washers as well. One of them I've already slid onto the threads. So this we've got to get from here inside the fuel tank and sticking through there so that I can get the lock nut and the secondary washer on over the top to clamp down on it. So how I'm going to do that is I've got an old lawnmower cord there. You can just get a bit of string if you want and just push that up through the hole. And what I'm hoping to do is just to feed it all the way in like that and then I'm going to take me spout off the lid and give it a little bit of a shake and hopefully it should be somewhere down there where I can pull it out like that and then I'm going to get me a piece of cord and then I'm going to push that into or as much as I can into the hole and then I'm going to get me tape if I can find the end of it and just uh, wrap it around folks and hopefully when I pull that through like that I should be able to pull that in and there you go that's now in look the washer's on the inside because I've already put the washer on so all I'll do then is to put the washer, the next one, on the outside there and just tighten down on the nut. There we go. And then just tighten that nut up and that hopefully, by holding that top bit still, we should create our seal. Right. And that's the fuel outlet fixed. Not the best uh, of jobs to be honest with you but um, I do gather they've improved it so if you've got the later one you won't have to do that right so the other end of the fuel line will then be connected onto there so just get another one of your clips push that pipe onto your new outlet fuel outlet like that I'll leave that sitting there for the moment but that's the fuel line connected and now coming out of the fuel pump you can put your inline fuel filter as well. So that does unscrew, that has got a little rubber seal in there. Just make sure that is nipped up, folks. And the uh, the base of it, or the part with the biggest part on, faces your unit, so that's the way that goes on. So that's the actual fuel line in as well now. So the final bit is to connect up the electric side of things, and that is the wiring loom here, which uh, should already come with everything you need on it as well so just take these cable ties off like that and you can't mess this up folks apparently the main one there which is the yellow one which literally just plugs in to the unit you can't get this round the wrong way it can only go in one way so that just clips in like that you have these two here which is your positive and negative to your battery or your supply and that's even got the fuels in line as well you've got this little yellow one there and that goes to again that one there you can't get that wrong either so that just literally plugs into your controller and then you can mount your controller wherever you want comes in a little case there as you can see you just pull that off and then you can fix that case to the wall and then clip your controller into it so that's that one and then your final connector is the one that connects onto your fuel pump which goes up there and that again just literally pushes on so that is basically all the wiring and as I said this will go to our battery I'll put a couple of little lugs on them and then we'll connect it up to the battery right folks we're all set up and ready to go but first of all we've got to purge the fuel line I've put some fuel as I said here in the uh, diesel tank now but the line is actually empty I'm connected up to the battery so I'm just going to put the fuse in and that should bring power to our panel. There we go, so I'll just put the fuse in there. You've got to prime the system first. And I think the simplest way to do that is once you've actually put the fuse in and we've got power to the unit, I think if you press the up and down arrows, let's put this on, press the up and down arrows together. Can you hear that? Thing is, when you let go, 
and it will stop when you let go. So best if you keep two people or maybe just keep it hands on it like that. There you go. The fuel pump is running. And you should hopefully be able to see the fuel start to work its way up the fuel line. But you have to keep these pressed in. So you can just see it start to creep up now. It's a bit slow, but it is coming up towards the pump. You've just got to let it do its stuff, folks. And you want that to go right up to the unit. Right, folks, we're fully primed now. So I think it's just a matter of turning the on and off buttons are on. It's on H3 at the moment. The fans come on. And it's starting to smoke a little bit, folks. There we go. Now, don't forget, it's going to smoke first of all, I think, because... Um, it's got to get up to temperature, so um, that apparently is normal at the beginning. We've got cold air blowing out at the moment. I do think it's got to go through a proving cycle first. So fan speed is on high H5, I think. I've got to learn how to work this, folks, but uh, at the moment I'm just going off my instincts. There we go. That's just kicked on a little bit more there now. And I can hear the burner operating. I'm just going to take it down to number four at the moment. Now don't forget this burning, this smoke only happens when the uh, unit is cold, I think. That will eventually come out nice and clear when it's burning efficiently. And this will also be outside and this will be ducted in to the room. So the fuel pump is clicking. And to be honest with you, I can barely hear it now. So this is really starting to ramp up now, folks. There we go, look, the uh, smoke's clearing up now, folks. Oh yeah, that's lovely and warm. Oh, that's lovely. That's beautiful, folks, that is really hot. Right, Let's see if we can see the temperature. That's 126 degrees centigrade. You see that? But standing in front of that, that is so warm coming out of there, folks, honestly. And that probably took a couple of minutes to get going. And as you can see, the smoke now is virtually ceased off of there. That bit of steam you can see there, it's just the, um, the packaging that was on it. So the actual smoke coming out of the exhaust is absolutely minimal. Well, you've got to be impressed with that, folks. I'm really impressed with that, especially the heat it gives out. And if I just take that take it down to number two if I could relay to you the heat that's coming out of there it's absolutely tremendous and I feel sure that when that's sitting outside in an enclosure that is going to warm this up absolutely superbly sure you do need a battery but I'll keep the battery inside an old spare car battery will do and then all you do to charge it up you just put a trickle charger on there and just leave it trickle charging once you've uh, finished using it switch the trickle charger on and that'll keep the battery topped up ideal that's ramping down now. But the heat out of there, folks, I can't believe it. So do I recommend these to heat your workshop up? Absolutely, first time I've done it. Anyway, there you go, folks. That's my experience with this brand new little Vivo diesel heater. Only a temporary mock-up, but you can see how simple it is to set up. And that little pump, I could barely hear that at all. And once this ducting's in from the um, outside of the unit to inside using that, and all you're gonna see from the inside it's going to be the little vents that I put in here. I'll probably put, put two of these in. Let's turn it off from the controller. There you go. That even works. That's gone off now. And it won't turn off straight away because it's got to prove itself down. And then it will turn itself off once it cools down the uh, element a little bit. As you can hear the fan's still blowing, but although the unit's off. And it's already in here now. It's up to 26 degrees in here already. Superb. Well impressed with that. Get yourself one of them folks for your workshop. And I'll leave a link below in the description exactly where I got this one from and what model this one is. Anyway, thanks very much folks. I hope you got something out of this video. So we'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.